Have you ever been locked out of your house? Yes. 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 Or locked out of a building or someplace that you're trying to get into, right? Yeah. Uh, and we used to have a whole drawer full of keys. I know you guys have a basket full of keys. Maybe you have a big ring that you keep your car keys, your house keys, and every other place you got to get to, and you've got this big ring of keys. And so you try to get into your house, but you don't know which key is the house key. And you just try one after another. And you try to slide the key in the lock and it doesn't turn. And the door doesn't open. And you're trying every key. And some keys, you look at them and you go, no, right off the bat, you can just tell at a quick glance, that's not it. That's not going to get me in. But then you get to this one key and you say, oh, that looks like my house key. That looks like the key that's going to work to this door. And you're so sure. You take that key and you slide it in the lock and you expect that door to open. And it stays locked. You can't open the door. You don't have the right key. That key was close, and it tricked you into thinking it was the right one, but it wasn't the right key. So after you've gone through all the keys on the key ring, you start thinking outside the box. Maybe there's another way in. Maybe I can go around the back door, find a loophole, find some other way to get into where I got to get to because after all, you've gone through this whole key ring. It's late now. You're hungry. There's bread inside. There's bread inside and you want to get to it, but you can't find a way in. So you go around the back and all the windows are shut. Everything's locked up. There is no other way in, even when you tried to make your own way. So everything's locked, everything's shut. And you think, well, I could break a window and try to crawl in, but that likely won't work. And Truthfully, you'll just end up hurting yourself trying to climb through broken glass. In order to gain access to the house where that bread is, you need to have the key. You need to have the key to get into the house and no other key is going to work. In order for the natural man of body and soul to unlock the kingdom of heaven and have access to God and the bread of life, he must have the key. And that key is Jesus Christ. Take your Bibles tonight and turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 3. You know, I was going to bring our big, uh, big key ring, but we actually did some cleaning and figured out whatever key was in that drawer and <laughs> threw out the ones that we didn't know was to what. <laughs> And every key that my wife wanted to throw away, I went, we're going to need that tomorrow. I'm sure of it, you know. Been in the drawer for 12 years. We've never known what it was to, but tomorrow we're going to need it. We haven't needed a key yet. So in John chapter 3, we're going to start right here in verse 1. This is Nicodemus coming to Jesus and asking him some questions. Verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now think about this. Nicodemus is a Pharisee, he's a high-ranking religious man, he knows all the scrolls and all that stuff, and Jesus tells him to be born again. What would you do the first time you heard that phrase? Born again? Pretty sure it was enough work the first time. You want, to, you want me to do it again? And that's exactly what Nicodemus is thinking. If we go into verse 4, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's logical. that's logical. That's what I would have thought. I'm like, what are you talking about? Jesus answered in verse 5, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So Jesus is teaching Nicodemus 
about body, soul, and spirit. Man is a, is a threefold being. When you're born, you have a body. You take up space. You have a body. And you breathe. And you have soul life. What makes you, you? You are a natural man of body and soul. When we get born again of God's spirit, we have spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. And then we're a complete being. We're a complete being. And Jesus is telling him this. The day of Pentecost has not yet come. This Being able to have this Holy Spirit and being born again is not yet available, but he's teaching him. God's telling him. How can a man be born a second time? Mm. Jesus said, flesh is flesh and spirit is spirit. Verse 7. Jesus says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? So he starts there talking about the wind. You cannot see spirit. You cannot see spirit. You can see my body. You can see me breathing. But you cannot see spirit. Spirit is not in the five senses. And he's talking about the wind. You can't see the wind. You can see the effects of the wind. You see the trees blowing, the leaves blowing, the high winds we had, the storms, the chairs blowing across the deck. You can see the effects of the wind. We talk about electricity a lot with this. You can't see electricity, but you see the effects of that electricity. When you flip the switch, the light comes on. You cannot see spirit, but you can see the effects. If you read in Galatians 5, people who operate get fruit of the Spirit. You can see that fruit in their life. So Jesus is saying, I'm talking about these earthly things, and you're not even believing me on that, so how can you believe me when we're talking about spiritual or heavenly things? Go to verse 13. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, and he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in Him, the Son of Man, should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That whosoever believeth in Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man, they will have everlasting life. Verse 17, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him, through the Son, might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus is telling him that it's through him, through him that you'll be born again, through him that you'll have everlasting life, through him that you'll have eternal life, through him that you should not perish. Turn to chapter 6 of John. And in verse 47... Chapter 6, verse 47. Verily, verily, Jesus saying again, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Jesus Christ is that bread of life. So if you want to get into the house to get the bread, you need the key. And the key is Jesus Christ. The key is Jesus Christ. Look at chapter 14. Look at another spot here. In John chapter 14 and in verse 5, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So when he says no man can come to the Father but by me, do you know what that means? Yes. No man can come to the Father but by me. You cannot break a window and go around back. You cannot try to use a different key. You cannot try to break down the door. There might be a lot of people selling a lot of keys out there, but there's only one key that's going to get you there, and that's Jesus Christ. It might look like the right key. It might, a quick glance, go, nope, that's not it. It's Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And He's the only way that you're getting there. Wow. You know, people try all these different ways. And it's been said a lot of times, if you go out on the street right now and you ask a hundred people, are you going to heaven? Do you think you're going to heaven? And they say, I'm a pretty good guy. I'm a pretty good person. Jesus Christ doesn't say being a good person is going to get you there. Uh, that's nice. I hope you're a good person. But that's not the key. You know, there's, there's man over here and there was God over here. And there was this chasm. And people tried every which way to get there. Good works doesn't get you there. Going to church every Sunday doesn't get you there. Praying on all your rosary beads doesn't get you there. Taking baths, sprinkling, going in the River Jordan, take 100 baths a day. It doesn't get you there. Chubby little Buddhas all over the place ain't going to get you there. Jesus Christ is that bridge between man and between God. <sighs> yeah, if you say, oh, I'll get to heaven. I'm a good person. You know what? That's relative to what's normal to your society and to your culture. Think about that. If we went to another country, and we said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty good person. Well, what's a good person where you're from? And what's a good person where I'm from? Those are different. Your realities of your circumstances and, and your culture and your society around you dictate... What is moral? Yeah. Go just to different parts of our country. If you went to one place, you said, well, I'm not locking over liquor stores. And one guy said, well, I only knocked over three last week. <laughs> I'm a pretty good guy because my buddy hit one every day. Is that going to get you there? Because I'm a pretty good person. You know, it's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way. There is no other way to get there. Turn to Acts chapter 2. And we'll see what he was talking about to Nicodemus about being born again. Acts chapter 2 obviously is that day of Pentecost when the gift of Holy Spirit was poured out for the first time. Men spoke in tongues. They manifested in the outward world. You could see and hear with your five senses that the Spirit was on the inside. And they breathed in and they spoke in tongues. Yeah. We talked about on one of these past Thursdays. What's the first thing people do? They're drunk. They don't know what they're talking about because yeah. nobody knew what to do with it. They immediately start. Yeah. Now, there's no way this is true. Yeah. But they're out there and they're speaking the wonderful works of God. And then Peter stands up and he starts delivering this great speech. We'll go down to verse 21. Chapter 2, verse 21. And Peter says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever... Whosoever means whosoever. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not whosoever goes to the temple three times a day. Not whosoever fasts for 40 days and 40 nights. It's whosoever shall call on the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Him, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Peter standing there. It wasn't long before this. They were cowering behind closed doors. And now he's standing out there in, in front of this mass of people, speaking in tongues, built up, bold. And he's telling them, this Jesus that you crucified, you took, that you slain, God raised him up, and it's in this name that you shall be saved. It's in the name 
of Jesus Christ. Go to Romans chapter 10. I know we have a lot of other teachings on our YouTube page and our Facebook page of our power of attorney and how we can use that name of Jesus Christ. That when you use that name, every knee must bow. That there is power in that name with that believing. There's power in that name for you to be born again of God's Spirit. In Romans, I'm still in Acts. In Romans chapter 10, a verse most of us are familiar with. Romans chapter 10 and in verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It is through confessing and taking Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, confessing Him as Lord in your life, and you believe in your heart, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, to believe is to be fully persuaded, fully persuaded that God raised Him from the dead. It says, thou shalt be saved. Shalt's an absolute. It's a no doubt about it, gonna happen, and you can't take it back. You shall be saved. You confess that name, Jesus Christ, as Lord in your life, and that God raised him from the dead, and you're going to heaven, and nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. We'll keep going in verse 11. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him, shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. For whomsoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. By the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. By taking Him as Lord in your life. In verse 14, How then? Shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And then it goes on. Well, as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. How can they call on him who haven't believed? And how can they believe if they have not heard? God gave us this ministry. He gave us this word to go out and to tell people about it. To tell people, you've been trying all the statues, you've been trying all the prayings, you've been trying all the fastings, you've been trying this, you've been trying that, and nothing's getting you there. Well, guess what? I've got the key. Let me tell you about him. Let me tell you about my big brother and what he did. Let me tell you about what he's done for my life and how now, he made a bridge that I don't need to go talk to some middleman. I can go talk to God. I can speak in tongues. I can manifest. I can know that I know that I know that I'm going because of Jesus Christ. Because one day I professed Him as Lord in my life. And I believed that God raised Him from the dead and I was saved. And you can too. All you got to do is believe it. You just got to know. If they don't, how are they going to know if nobody's ever taught them? How are they going to know if nobody's, they've never heard of this? They think you've got to do X, Y, and Z, and you have to make sure you're water baptized at three different times in your life, and you've got to make sure you do this and do that and dot your eyes and cross your T's. No. Jesus said, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And that's what he means. Go back to the Gospel of John in chapter 10. You know, it's really something. If you haven't done it, or if it's been a while, just read through the Gospels. And just read through everything that Jesus Christ went through, everything He did for you and for me. We didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. But He did it. Because He loves us. 
He did it because He always did the Father's will. And God loves us. He walked perfectly. He fulfilled every Scripture. He did everything right for you and for me so that we could sit here and have this fellowship and have the power to use His name to manifest the Spirit, to make that available to us to use. John chapter 10, we'll go to verse 1. This is Jesus speaking. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. You can't go breaking windows. You can't try to sneak in the back door. Verse 2, But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the stranger's voice. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. That happens all the time, right? Jesus is all the time he's speaking parables to people and the disciples are going, wow, what does that mean? <laughs> Verse 7, then, Jesus, then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not before to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And, any, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. You know, Jesus Christ did all this knowing, knowing what was going to happen and willingly. And I always make that point. They, they never took his life. He gave it. They couldn't take it from him if they tried. But he laid it down for you and for me so that this Holy Spirit, this gift that we could have would be made available on that day of Pentecost. You know, we, we always talk about if the adversary had known what was going to happen, he would have never crucified Jesus Christ because he could contain and try to mess with one. Yeah. Now we're all over. All of us have Christ in us. We're born again. Mm. You know, there's many of us here in this room, many of us watching online that know this, know this truth. We know that we're born again. We operate the manifestations of the Spirit. You know, those manifestations that show in the five senses world. The eternal reality that we've got Christ in us, that we're born again, that we have that gift of Holy Spirit. Because we have the key. We have the key. We have that bridge. We have a mediator. We have Jesus Christ making intercession for us. I didn't know that until somebody told me. Why don't you go tell somebody this week that God loves them, that Jesus Christ loves them, and that you love them. God bless. <laughs>